My name is George Bew, and this is a video to explain spin waves. This is going to be a simplified explanation, and it's a classical explanation rather than a quantum electrodynamic explanation. And uh, the, cl the classical explanation should be sufficient for you to develop a pretty good understanding of what spin waves are, how they work, and what kind of things you can do with spin waves. Spin waves propagate through precessing electrons within a magnetic material. So first I'm going to start by talking about the electron. The electron, or actually any particle with an electric field and the attribute of spin, will have a magnetic field associated with it due to the spin of the electric field. If you have a loop of wire and current flowing through the wire, um, you may already be aware that that develops a magnetic field due to the flow of current through the loop of wire. And a similar type of thing happens with just a single electron. If you have the electric field of the electron moving, it's no longer current flowing through a loop of wire, but rather the electric field itself that's rotating now. But still, it will develop a magnetic field similar to current flowing in a loop of wire. So f for an electric part electrically charged particle like the electron, there's a small magnetic dipole associated with it that runs through its spin axis with a north on one end and a south on the other in lines of magnetic flux between the two just as if you had a little small bar magnet. So Within a magnetic material, like uh, pure iron, for example, when all of these spins of all the electrons are pointed in a similar direction, then they develop a large macroscopic magnetic field from all the microscopic magnetic fields of the individual electrons. Within a sample of iron, it is not every electron that develops the magnetic field associated with a magnetic material like iron. Rather, it is only the unpaired electrons shared between bonds between the atoms in an atomic lattice of the material. If you have a single atom of iron, then the electrons in the different orbitals around the nucleus of that atom will be paired up where you will have even number of electrons in each orbital. And for each electron with its spin axis pointing in one direction, you'll have the second paired electron with its spin axis pointing in the opposite direction, such that outside of that atom, the magnetic fields are neutralized by each other. However, when you have a sample quantity, larger quantity of iron atoms all bound together in an atomic lattice, then between each set of molecular bonds, there will be one electron shared between bonds so it is no longer paired with a second electron. Once you have unpaired electrons, then you have magnetic fields that are not canceled out by compensating electron spin of a paired electron. So then if you take all of those individual magnetic fields and you have them all pointing in a similar direction, then you can get a larger macroscopic magnetic field from that sample of iron. And with any magnetic material, if you have electron spin and or orbital motion that is not compensated for 
by equal and opposite motion of other electrons, then those magnetic fields, if all pointed in a similar direction, will make a larger magnetic field for that whole sample. So now, it is also possible to develop spin waves among these electrons within a material like this. And to explain spin waves, first let's uh, look at how an electron um, how an electron reacts to changes in the direction of its spin axis orientation. If you have a single electron that's shared between atoms in a material like iron and that electron's spin axis is pointing up and down, then that electron with spin, if acted upon by some outside electromagnetic force or magnetic field, so as to try and turn that magnetic field in a different orientation, then it will not turn directly into the direction it's pulled or pushed, but rather since it has spin, it will react by precessing. If you have a top or a gyroscope and you tilt it so that then gravity is pulling on it, it doesn't just move straight down due to the pull of gravity, but the combined forces due to its spin and the pull on it cause it to precess around at some precession rate and precession angle due to the combined interactions of its spin and the forces acting on it to try to reorient its spin axis. So electrons within an external magnetic field would do something similar. They will precess. So within a sample of magnetic material, if you have a large group of unpaired electrons all pointing in a similar direction, and then an external magnetic field is pulling on those trying to reorient them in some other direction, then they will precess under the influence of that external field. The frequency at which they precess is dependent on how strong the force is it's trying to pull on them. So a typical precession frequency for electrons in a magnetic material in an external magnetic field of say one tesla would be anywhere from 3 to 10 gigahertz or possibly even a wider range than that. 